Hi everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle and welcome to um, what I'm going to call the first official haul video of 2016. Uh, I did have a little tiny estate sale haul and a uh, few things from when we went to Florida last month, but uh, this haul is a little bit more significant, so I'm going to call this one the first official one. Um, so the season has started. Hooray! <laughs> so excited. It's like twitching all winter, although I'm not liking getting up at the crack of dawn on Saturdays. Um, but the first sale of the year was a rummage sale. And you guys know how I love my rummage sales. Um, and I found this one on Craigslist. I had never been to it before, so of course I wanted to get there early, <clears throat> just in case. And I'm very, very happy I did. I was shooting for 8 o'clock. I got there around 10 after 8 uh, by the time I had parked my car and everything. And I was already, I don't know, 20th or 25th person in line, which was crazy because it didn't open until 9. And by the time it did open, I couldn't even see the end of the line. I think they were in the next county somewhere. It was insane. Um, apparently this is an annual one that I had no idea about, about 20 minutes from my house. But it's definitely going on the list. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you guys what I got. It was in an old mill. Um, it's like this whole bunch of historic buildings on this property and they have a bunch of events throughout the year. So, it was kind of, you know, one room was housewares, Christmas other holidays, knickknacks, electronics, then the room behind that one was books, CDs, DVDs, then there was an upstairs which was clothes, bath, crafts which I didn't know, and linens, and then uh, there was another barn outside where they put all the kids toys and the kids clothes. So because I didn't know the layout too well, I didn't go upstairs until about 20 minutes in, so I don't know if I missed any good crafty goodies or beauty products, but I'll know better for next year. So I'm going to start showing you some things that uh, I bought that I'm actually not selling on eBay. I'm going to sell them at the consignment sale where I sell my daughter's old stuff. Um, I always try and scrounge around when I know it's coming up to get some extra things to sell in it I get 75% um, uh, return on everything that I sell. So this is one of those find it games. This is the beach version which I've never seen the beach version before. I paid two bucks for this. I think I'm asking like five at the consignment sale. But I just wanted to make a little profit on everything. But you have to shake this thing around and you have to find all these little items. And the items are listed on the top and you have to find the items inside of this thing. And then the only other things that I bought to sell at the consignment sale were DVDs. There is one um, Baby Einstein DVD that I don't have here right now because um, I have a lot started downstairs and I put it with the other ones that I have. But all of these were, let's see, five for two dollars. So this brand new Rudolph and this VeggieTales Ultimate Christmas Collection, I'm going to actually keep these until the fall sale and sell them then. And then these are already input in the system to sell during the spring sale. Pooh's Heffalump Movie, these actually sell really well on eBay. This one though is a tiny bit scratched up and I don't like to sell them on eBay if they're not like close to perfect. Um, even though, you know, I'm sure it works just fine. But if you find this, and there's a Halloween one, and I'm not sure if there's any others, uh, if you can get them cheap enough, pick them up, because they do sell pretty well. Curious George the Movie, Elmo and Grouchland, Alvin and the Chipmunks on Blu-ray, and I got three Bob the Builder DVDs, which are all brand spanking new in the package. So, those will all be sold at the consignment sale, hopefully. Whatever doesn't sell... I just donate so I don't have to bother going back there and picking stuff up and have it laying around my house. So my house is way too overcrowded with stuff. I'm actually trying to get rid of some of it. Um, 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you everything else I bought. Um, everything cost me, everything that I'm now going to show you cost me a total of, let's see, $12. And I already made that back today with a bid that I got on one of the items. Most of this stuff is already listed. I'm trying to stay on top of things. Who knows? <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe that should be my resolution for this year. Um, first off, I got this sugar and creamer set and got it because it said William Sonoma on the bottom. Uh, this is from their brasserie line. Uh, Replacements.com has the same set on eBay right now. They want $80 plus shipping. I put mine up for, I believe it was $40 with free shipping at auction. Is it an auction? No, it's fixed price, sorry. Um, fixed price and already have a watcher on it. We'll see what happens with that. Then I got some coffee mugs. They were 25 cents a piece or I don't know, maybe less considering they just kind of looked in my bag and told me to give them 10 bucks. This is one of those Wachtersbach ones from West Germany that I've bought in the past. This is their Christmas tree line. It's very popular. There's a lot of this out there. I probably shouldn't have bought this one because I probably won't make more than maybe five bucks off of it. But uh, anyway, got that. And then I got three Lennox Winter Greetings mugs. This is the Cardinals. And then this one is the, what is it? Cedar Waxwing and Dark Eyed Junko. Okay, and there's actually two of those. Um, I know in the past I have gone on and on and on and on about the coffee mugs and how much I love them and how they're, you know, a big part of my sales. And I actually now don't know how many that I'm going to be buying this season because the postal hike was ridiculous back in January. Um, for those of you who sell, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it used to cost me with a mug that was over nine dollars, I mean that was over a pound, it would cost me like I think $8.99 with my discount to ship it. I know some people ship them in flat right priority envelopes and you know do the whole packing them in cardboard and wrapping them in bubble wrap and all that stuff. I don't have the time, the energy, or the desire <laughs> to mess with all that. Um, plus, to me, it's just safer in a box. But for me to now ship a mug from the East Coast to the West Coast, that's over a pound, which most of them are, including the box, costs almost $12, and that's with my discount. And that's insane. Um, so I think I'm going to be a lot pickier this year with the things that I buy and try and buy a lot more first class items, media mail items, or things that will fit in a flat rate padded envelope. The post office is starting to make uh, shipping close to impossible. <clears throat> um, if anyone wants to bitch about it, <laughs> you can comment below. Uh, I got this. This is a, a cardboard decoupage uh, box, like a trinket box or a candy box from Germany it says made in Germany right in there. It's not an old one because it says made in Germany and not, you know, Western Germany. But still should sell. This is a big one. This one's six inches in diameter. And got this little bell <clears throat> with these doves or lovebirds on it. It's a cloisonne enamel bell from Nyko, which might be hard to see but it says Nyko right there. Um, these don't sell all that well so maybe five to ten on that. The um, Christmas ball maybe like ten bucks and the mugs eh, five to ten. Nothing crazy. Then I bought these just because they were different. They are uh, they're a set of coasters from Australia featuring Aboriginal art. Not my taste at all, but I know there are some people out there who 
would appreciate them. And since they cost me, you know, less than a dollar, I took a chance. And they're from Oz Aboriginal. Maybe 10 on those. Um, got a couple of beauty products upstairs. This I just bought because it was brand spanking new in the box. This is Early American Old Spice Dusting Powder. Um, somebody has this up. And it's, theirs is also brand new. And then in the title they put Great Father's Day Gift. Um, I'm thinking this is not the regular Old Spice scent. This looks like it's geared more towards a woman than a man. And personally, I don't know a man on earth who uses dusting powder with a powder puff. But I'm sure there are some, maybe, but none that I know. And um, <laughs> I sure know my husband doesn't want dusting powder as a father's day gift. So I left that part out of my title. But I'm hoping to make maybe 10 on that. And then I found this. This is a rare perfume. Uh, it was first put out in 1945 by Ravel. It's called Pagoda, as you can see. It's almost all gone, but it has a pretty bottle, and a lot of people collect these old vintage bottles. Somebody else has one on eBay right now. They want, I think, $80 for it, or best offer. I started mine out at 20 with free shipping, um, and it has the original box, just to see what happens. If it goes for 20 I'm happy with that. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else. Oh, this I was going to sell until I realized it was missing a piece, so this is going to go in the donate pile. This I just grabbed because it looked interesting off the office supplies table at the sale. This is a Western, or Weston, sorry, not Western, Weston um, exposure meter for, you know, a light exposure meter from 1956 came in the original case and everything but unfortunately the little it should have a little red needle here and that's missing I don't know how because it doesn't look like this thing has ever been opened up but regardless I am going to stick it in the donate pile because it's only really worth about five bucks anyway and that's if it's complete then I got an old calculator this is a Hanamex BCM 803 uh, it's got some stuff like carved in here, but it does work. Um, it doesn't have batteries in it right now, but I did put batteries in it and test it. Maybe worth 10 bucks. And now we get to the more profitable items that I bought at the sale. I got this Chef Series knife from Tupperware. I wasn't even aware Tupperware made knives, but they do. And this is a really nice bread knife. And get it out of the box. And this was brand new in the package. It had cable ties around the handle, but I cut the cable ties off because this had been in storage and the blade was kind of jacked up and dirty and needed some TLC. So I took it out and cleaned it up nice. And I did take pictures of it with the cable tie still on it. And then um, you know, made everyone aware that it is brand new. I just took it out to clean it. So that's a very nice knife. I'd keep it myself, but I have enough bread knives. I have my late husband's bread knife, which I accidentally broke a little piece of the handle off of a couple years ago. And um, when my son went to Europe this past year with my mother-in-law, he told her, you know, she was trying to think of something to buy me, and of course he knows, you know, I'm a big knife snob, so he goes, oh, well, you know, we're in Switzerland, buy mom a nice bread knife. You know, she broke her bread knife. So my mother-in-law brought me back a, a few knives, including this bread knife, and now my son's mad at me because I hardly ever use it because I won't get rid of his father's <laughs> bread knife. It works perfectly fine, it's just missing a little tiny part of the handle. Um, but I can't, it's just very sentimental to me and you know, he loved his knives, he was a chef and I won't part with him. So he's gonna have to get used to the fact that that bread knife's not going anywhere. All right, um, then I got this and when I opened it up, I saw that this was brand spanking new. This is a Delphi Sky-Fi receiver Oh, I should make about, I'm hoping 20 to 30 on that knife, by the way. 
This is SkyFi receiver um, with the remote, brand spanking new in the clamshell packaging. And then there's a few other goodies down here. Um, there's the car charger and the tape, the cassette thing. Another remote mounting hardware for the car. So I'm going to sell this all together. This has been recently selling for about 48 with free shipping. So I think I'm going to charge 50 or 55 with all these extra goodies and shouldn't have a problem getting rid of it. Okay, and then I went into the barn where all the kids stuff was after I'd been there probably a couple hours. And I was looking through all the games, looking for Scrabble pieces and all that stuff. And the only thing I came across was this. This is called Triple Threat Baseball. It was produced back in 1999. It's a really, really nice game. And it's brand spanking new in this wooden box. It's very heavy, by the way. These are all the playing pieces, the dice, little pencils. This is the scoreboard that you hang this thing off of. And then these are actually cards um, that you would get if you bought. There's a big league add-on set for this game. I guess it initially comes as a, a rookie set and then you can buy the big league add-ons. So this had everything in it so that you could play rookie league and big league. And there's also a big score pad down there. Brand spanking new. There's one other one on eBay and I don't think it's a big league edition. And they want $100. This game retailed initially in 1999 at $50. So it's definitely not a hunk of junk. So I'll probably put it up for, I don't know, maybe 75 at auction, just see if I get any watchers and see what happens. And we'll take it from there. But these are really hard to find, so couldn't really get many comps for it. Okay, last but not least, two of my best deals at this sale. This was in the book section of the sale. I got this, I think that's Reary. Or Ryrie, I don't know. I'm going to say Riri. Study Bible. Um, nice burgundy bonded leather cover. Tabbed. And it's in absolutely gorgeous condition. Paid 75 cents for it and just got a bid this morning for $39.99 with free media mail shipping. So this paid for everything I bought at the rummage sale and then some. And my best, best purchase was this, which I saw laying on one of the tables in the Christmas section. And when I opened it up, I found this beautiful little snowflake. Didn't really think much of it until I turned it over, and it's going to be really hard for you guys to see. But right here it says MMA, and then right here it says 90. Um, I knew MMA meant Metropolitan Museum of Art. And it also set it on the back here. The initial price was twelve, what twelve fifty? They've produced these every year since 1971, I believe, in gold tone or gold plate and sterling. And this is sterling. And this one is worth about a hundred bucks. Oh, very happy to get this, especially since it cost me less than a dollar. So that is my first um, haul of 2016, my first official one. And there's another rummage sale next weekend, which I'm also very happy about. Um, that one was okay. I went to it in the fall, and they're having another one um, next week. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, and I'm going to be back in just a minute and show you guys um, my sales for the weekend since this video is running way too long. But thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.